It's Unstable Topic with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, welcome to Unstable Topics, a fast-paced, jam-packed, unhinged bestie podcast filled with facts, reacts, and made-up games in between. We're your hosts, Sarah and Maggie. And we're excited for you to join our best friend hangout, where we surprise one another with things we find interesting or hilarious or just to see how the other will react. Our friendship might be totally stable, but you never know what your bestie might throw your way to knock you off your game. So come shake things up, learn something new, and laugh along with us. This is Unstable Topics. Three, two, one, fight. Hey, bestie. Hey, Bestie. I uh, bought a new candle to put on our matching foldable desks that we purchased. That's fancy. I don't have to balance my computer and microphone on a chair. Um, And I was so excited to have this candle because I thought it'd be some nice ambiance while we're recording. Um, And so I bought this fancy candle that has flickering flames. And I didn't think about it being a podcast and having a loud flickering sound um, at the same time. So I do not have it lit. So, okay, a couple things. You bought this candle online. No, I bought it in person. Okay, okay, thank goodness. Because I'm like, that is that is brave no, for you, you to buy to a candle. It. You have to smell it, 100%. Two, you have lit candles in your house. With yes. three children. Yes. I love lighting candles. In fact, it's one of our favorite games to play as a family. Uh, <laughs> what do you And by game? as a family, I mean me when I'm alone with my children. I don't think Kyle sanctions this game. Um, we practice blowing out birthday candles. Uh, we do it. We, I mean, it's like hours of entertainment. In fact, if the kids are getting like a little rowdy, I'm like, who wants to play happy birthday? And then I bring out the candles because you have to be still and calm when there's fire. So they have to like immediately (laughs) bring it all together. And then they sit at the table and then I light a candle and we all sing happy birthday. And one at a time, they get to blow out a candle, which is really, I mean, like deep breaths, meditation. I don't know. Am I a parenting genius? Maybe bust wow. out the bust out the fire every once in a while. I I guarantee if I busted out a candle and it wasn't like in some place high where a, a ball couldn't knock it over or any couldn't grab it. Because here's the thing: in my house, at any given moment, there is a there is a football flying through the air, a frisbee throwing, something is coming at your face. Yeah, and it's gonna in. The law of parenting clearly states if it's going to burn down, if it can burn down, it's going to burn down. You know, (laughs) if you have a lit candle in a house with children five and under, something bad's going to happen. Well, to be fair, this candle I'm only going to light when I'm in the room with the door shut, you know. But the other candles I do light. As part of a game, it's not like I'm just lighting candles. It's my children playing with fire, Sarah. And, you know, and you're not the type of person that forgets things either. Like, you're not the type of person that would lock their keys in your car, but specifically lock them where the door closes so that you couldn't get them out. I would only do that like three or four times in my lifetime. And I have already done it three or four times. So I think I'm done with that. And for forgetting things, yeah. Did I once forget to plug in my microphone when we were recording? Sure. Would but I ever we're... leave a candle and go for a walk around my neighborhood? Yeah, of course. Of course I'm going to forget it. <laughs> but do I think it's safe to play with candles with my children? Absolutely. Maggie, are you ready for your fact? I am. Before he became president, Abraham Lincoln was an elite wrestling champion. In 300 matches, he only lost one. What? That is so fascinating. That's a real thing. 
That's a real thing. Look, please do not make this another fact where you go and Google it. You're I'm going not going to. Try- to. I trust this one. It's fascinating because I've always heard like the story of Abraham Lincoln as he was like a big loser, right? Like mm-hmm. he he lost. He couldn't he couldn't win anything. Oh, what a what a sad pathetic loser. And then he became president. Yeah, I didn't. I've never heard. I never heard that interpretation of Abraham Lincoln. Before. Oh, really? Yeah. No? I've never heard never heard that before. No, um, my thing of Abraham Lincoln has always been very like this positive man of the people who came up and, you know, rallied America through a really hard time. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's Not the a- lesson, though. It's like the Michael Jordan story. Like Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team. That's like the Abraham Lincoln story. Like, oh, he I, tried to he's tried to start a business and couldn't do it, but then he ended up being one of the most influential and important did he really, historical figures. Did he really try to start a business and not and not be successful? I mean, Google it. Google Look, it. I don't want to I'm not going back to <laughs> I'm I'm taking you for I just for me, I do not recall my when I think of Abraham Lincoln. I do not think of he was like a uh, rags to riches story. He he was though. He was very ragged and riches. I didn't know he was a wrestler. I think that's something wrestle. that should be taught in elementary school. 300, sure. 300 matches. I remember learning about Abraham Lincoln in third grade and having to write like a you know biography, and I described mm-hmm. him as tall, dark, and handsome, and. <laughs> No one batted an eye. I don't think I really. I was like, yeah, he's tall. He's got dark hair. He must be handsome. Tall, dark, and handsome Abraham Lincoln. Wrestling champion of my heart. So I grew up, most of my childhood was spent right outside of Washington, D.C. And you were upstate New York. So you were closer than most people to D.C. Did you ever go to the theater where he was shot? Or did you ever go do you see my only so yes i've been to the theater but my favorite thing about abraham lincoln is right across the street there is a lincoln waffle shop <laughs> a abraham lincoln waffle shop and so jamie and i went to dc ages ago and we saw him like well obviously we have to eat here at this abraham lincoln waffle shop yeah it was good it was a good uh experience Eating that waffle? I don't, I mean. This is what I would say about that. I feel like if I was going to open an Abraham Lincoln themed breakfast spot, I would do French toast sticks and then call them Lincoln logs. Oh, and that's I would a serve good one. them as like little log cabins. That's so, a great I don't know, idea. but kind of it when wasn't you said that. Abraham Lincoln waffles, I was like, okay, missed opportunity. That's really good. Hey, Maggie, so are you ready to react? Of course. So we just talked about Abraham Lincoln was a wrestler and now we have wrestling we have pro wrestling Mm -hmm. back in abraham lincoln's day i'm sure all his wrestling was real but now do you think pro wrestling is real or do you think it's fake do you think it's staged (laughs) well this is a real head scratcher uh (laughs) this is i think Here's what I think. I think it's much like um, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus. I think that. Whoa, pause the phone. Pause, pause, pause. You very need to real. Clear. I think it's very real. Okay. I think there's no doubt in my mind for our young listeners, our under eight year old audience, which is, you know, thriving. Our children. It's- our children. Yeah, our children. Walter listens to unstable topics. Yeah, and he knows then. He knows that professional wrestling is a thousand percent real. Those stories that they tell are uh, grounded in fact and Mm -hmm. that they are uh, really, really, uh, really real. So I love pro wrestling as a child. I grew up watching like, Hitman, Heart, whatever, and Stone all Cold the Steve great Austin. Steve, that was later. Oh. The, this was like the 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 Randy Savage oh. and and Hulk, Hulk Hogan, and, not the Hulk, Hulk Hogan, and who else? The Grave Digger or something like that. The Undertaker. 
Undertaker. We were just talking about monster trucks. That's Grave Digger. They they really hit each other, right? They like they really body slam, and they get hit with chairs. Yes, yeah. They get them. They get physically injured in reality. Like yeah, I think it's kind of like stage combat. You Is know? it? Yeah, like I think they really get hit, but they also know how to take a hit. You know. Do Do you think they choreograph the fights beforehand? No. No. I don't think they choreograph it. I think they know how to dramatically hit and fall. Okay. But I don't think they're like, okay, and then this is the spot you got to be in. I do think that there's like going to be a winner and they know who the winner is going to be. You do think that? Yeah, they have to because they got to, you know. Oh, they do have the storylines. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't, it's been like a minute since I watched wrestling. I do think of our friend um, Laura and her husband Billy love wrestling they're huge wrestling fans and they go to like the wwe raw live or whatever yeah wrestlemania so i know right now they're listening and they're thinking to themselves these chicks don't know anything (laughs) but we do know that abraham lincoln won 300 wrestling matches so tip of the top hat to that Step right up. It's time to play Friend, Enemy, Block. Yes. Who of these three celebrities provided will Sarah or Maggie pick to be their friend, to be their enemy, and to block from all contact for the rest of their lives? Let's find out on Friend, Enemy, Block. Sarah, for this Friend, Enemy, Block, I'm bringing out them boys. And not the Dallas Cowboy dem boys, but famous Democratic men. Of these liberal dudes, who would you friend, who would you enemy, and who would you block? Barack Obama. Oh my gosh. JFK. FDR. So real quick, when Maggie said Democrats, like my excitement level dropped like I went from a hundred, like where is this going? Where is this going? And then I was like, ah, democratic political figures. Dem boys. This is perfect because we're just talking about old Abraham. So looky here. <sighs> just keeping oh that okay. political. You grew up outside of DC. You got to have an opinion about this, you know? Sure. Well, obviously, Barack's my friend. I hope he would be my friend. I don't know if he would accept my friend request, but I would 100,000% accept his friend request. Um, and then we have JFK and FDR. FDR. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be enemies with JFK. Oh. Look, I'm pro Jackie O. And anyone who mistreats Jackie is not a friend in my book. And he would, be, he would be my enemy. Um, but I would see him because Jackie and I obviously would do a lot of hanging out, mm-hmm. but he would not – wouldn't invite him to my birthday party. Happy and birthday. Then, yeah. And then FDR would block. Why? Uh, basically because, you know, I – he he's not doing it for me. You know, I, I think out of – all the things that <laughs> FDR accomplished in his career as president, like, you know, the Great Depression and all that. No, he, didn't he pull us out of the he, Great Depression? Part of it. Maggie, it, look, here's the thing. He, he did a lot of those new deals. He did the new deals, the FDR. And that's great. Um, but no deal... <laughs> For this friendship. No, no deal for this friendship. I feel like he would have so many ideas. Like he'd constantly be posting on his feed about like these big you know? grand ideas. You- and I'd be like, okay, okay, we get it. You've got lots of great ideas. You're like shaping America. Fine, I don't know, FDR. Maggie. I feel like, look, here's my thought about FDR. I think he was an opportunistic person with his ideas. He's like, oh, the country needs help. Well, here's my chance to shine. Let's pull out some of these ideas when kind of like they should have existed already, you know, Mm. like social security. You don't like social security? 
No, it should have existed before. Oh, it, yeah. It's kind of like a dumb, depression. it's like kind of like a simple, like, yeah, of course. Of course. Like, duh. You know? Or like, secure the banks. Or like, you know? Uh, other things he did. Other things he did. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting that did you not think- two of the three huh? famous Democrats I picked go by initials. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Did you, you said to yourself, this is a great fun game that yeah. people are going to be like, yeah, let's get into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you know a lot about FDR? I thought I did. And then once we started talking, <laughs> I was like, it's all fuzzy up there. You know? Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack be a celebrity the gals can think of quick. It's time for You Don't Know Jack, (laughs) where Sarah and Maggie share some facts about a celebrity named Jack and try to guess who it is. This Jack was a legendary pirate of the seven seas and the irreverent trickster of the Caribbean, a captain of equally dubious morality and sobriety a master of self-promotion and self-interest. Who is this Jack? Jack Sparrow. Final answer. Ding, 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 ding. Correct mundo. Yeah. Also goes by Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. But I, at first I was like, okay, wait, this is definitely Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, But then I was like, wait, is there an actual historic Jack pirate that Jack Sparrow is based off of? And I was like, is it Jackbeard? And I was like, no, Jackbeard isn't the name of a pirate. It's Blackbeard, but it rhymes with Jack. So I got a little, I was a little nervous, but I went with my gut. Proud to be the champion of this, you don't know Jack, proud to know him. Um, So... I went to Google real quick. Is Jack Sparrow real? Like, was he based on a true story that is entirely fictional? Yes. Entire, yeah. Entirely fictional. But what is real is that John Ward was the inspiration for the character of Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean films. He, John Ward? John Ward. And his nickname was Sparrow. Okay. And he was known I was for like, John Ward Lampard. doesn't sound like a pirate name to me. No, his nickname was Sparrow, and he was known for his flamboyant style. And it shows like what a little... What would your pirate guy. name be? What would my pirate name be? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, would, would pirate names need to be like tricky? Like a... Like a... Ooh. Like a... I don't know. Oh, gosh, I don't know, Maggie. I'm not good at this name game. I'm trying to think. Like I'd probably be like the... Um, the pocket knife, Arr. the pocket knife of, of White Rock Lake. Arr. <laughs> because you would I'd use be cutting, you know? Yeah. I would be, argh, argh, the vacuum duster of Gatewood Drive, argh, there she blows again down the, down the road. A dusty old pirate is she. I don't like that's what I would say. being being dusty. Not, well, like, that's like whoa. what they would say because it'd be like, ah, there she blows. You see the vacuum a coming, and you know the revving of the vacuum engine. She's gonna come and suck you up and spit you out like a dust mite, matey. <laughs> it's like a urban legend ghost story now. The kids I would read it. Re- I'd read it like about the run home to her parents. Oh no, here she comes! They're like, it's okay. It's okay, Sally and Johnny. It's just an herbal. Like, no, no, I saw the dust. I saw the dust. And then you'd be like, no, no, no. And then when the parents turn around, you'd go, Arr. Arr. <laughs> scare them. Scare those yeah. kids. And like like with the pick pocket knife, it would be like, no, really, there's no one outside that's going to mug you. You're safe. No woman is going to come up and flip open a blade and try and cut you. You know what? I would. It would be ironic for me to be named Pocket Knife because I don't think I can even open a pocket knife. I would, would be struggling. It would take They're me so a while. They're so hard. 
they're hard to help in. Like some of them have like that little um, nub that comes out and you yeah. use that to flip it up. But if you're thinking like Swiss Army knife, you, they have like those indentions that you got to take time and you got to pull it out. Like it takes time to lift yeah. that blade. And you got to have like a little bit of a nail, but it has to be a strong nail. Can't be yeah. like a breakable nail. So I can just see you like like ready to attack and you're like, Arg, hold on while I get me switchblade out. And you get it out. I would just, like, I would just throw the knife at people. Like it wouldn't be open. I would just <laughs> throw, the, throw the hard metal case. You know, and that's, and I would just would... knock people on the knuckles with the metal case. Arr, arr, arr. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.